Good morning. Welcome back to Bacon Cook and Grilling. Today I'm going to be making some uh, pizza sauce. I'm going to make some pizzas later on and put them on the pellet grill tonight. So for right now I'm just going to do the pizza sauce. And I've got a lot of the ingredients already measured out in here in the dish. Um, I've got uh, one teaspoon of sugar I'm going to use over here. And I've got two teaspoons of garlic powder, one teaspoon of onion powder, one and a half teaspoons of oregano, half teaspoon of basil, uh, one 15 ounce can of tomato sauce, one 8 ounce can of tomato sauce. And uh, that should be enough. I'm going to make two large sized pizzas from scratch later on. Put those on the grill, like I said. So for right now, all I have to do is basically just add the sugar in here, the teaspoon of sugar. It's already got sugar in the tomato sauce, but I like something close to a, like a marinara sauce. It's a little bit sweeter. And I put some extra garlic powder in, too, with the mixture I've got here. And uh, basically, I like to make it up early enough and let the uh, sauce sit in the fridge for a little bit. It seems to thicken up a little bit and makes it a little... It gives a little bit better flavor after everything kind of marinates a little bit in there. So um, we'll do the pizza video here shortly. But you can use this sauce on about anything you want. You can a lot of times buy the store sauce, store jar sauce. But I like making my own. My family likes it better whenever we make our tomato sauce. All right, uh, we're going to go ahead and make the uh, pizza dough right now. And basically, uh, this will make two large size pizzas, or you can make a bunch of small ones, however you want to do it. But I'm going to use two large pizzas tonight. And I've got four cups of flour. It's all-purpose flour. I've got two and a half teaspoons of yeast. I've got one teaspoon of salt and a tablespoon of honey. And you can use sugar if you wanted to if you didn't have honey on hand. But I just like, I think it does a better job. And plus, honey is usually good for you sometimes. And uh, also, too, for the uh, dough mix itself, I'm going to use three tablespoons of olive oil. And whenever I go to finish the pizzas, too, before we top, put the sauce and the cheese and whatever else we're going to put on them, I, coat the, I like to brush the uh, pizza crust with the uh, olive oil, also keeps the tomato sauce and everything from soaking the crust. And uh, I've got uh, about one and a half, or one and a quarter cups of uh, warm water. Now you don't want it real hot, it'll kill the yeast. So I'm gonna put that in, and I'm gonna go ahead and throw in the uh, salt, yeast, and the honey. And we're just gonna stir that up, and we're gonna let that sit for about 10 minutes until everything starts to bubble. We'll come back. It'll look kind of foamy once it starts to bubble. And then after that gets to that stage, we're going to go ahead and mix in the uh, flour and the olive oil after that. Then. But, yeah, we'll, this will be about 10 minutes or so. Okay, we've let the yeast sit for about 10 minutes, the yeast and the salt and the water and the sugar or the honey. And uh, everything's bubbling now. You can smell the yeast. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, dump the flour in here. And we're going to start off a wooden spoon to begin with. And I've got a like a dough scraper I'm going to use. A lot of times I've put it in the electric mixer before and done that. But if you just want to do it by hand and don't want a fourth electric mixer if you don't have one, then a dough scraper works pretty well. It's just a little piece of plastic here that uh, I'll use eventually here to get it off the sides and help mix it a little bit better. And I'm going to go ahead and throw in some olive oil, like I said, probably about three tablespoons. See how that is. See what the consistency of the dough is after I do this. Okay, yeah, like I said, the dough scraper works pretty well to get off the edges of the bowl. Plus, like I said, you can basically use it like a mixer. And we just want to get it, it's kind of shaggy, they call it right now. It's kind of shaggy looking. It's not all coming together, but eventually it will. I'm just going to have to get my hands in here in a minute and just mix it up. We may need to put some more flour, more water in, some more oil. Actually, I think I'll probably have a little more oil right now, just to give it a better consistency. And uh, I think probably about this point, I'm just going to go ahead and put my hands in here and just knead it by hand. I want to get it nice and smooth and kind of, I guess if it's a word, elasticy. Um, you kind of want it like a, almost like a rubbery texture whenever you're done with it here. It's going to be a little bit shiny but easy to handle. Yeah, it looks like it's doing pretty good here. I still feel a lot of moisture in the dough while I'm mixing this. And like I said, if we need to, just so it doesn't all stick, we'll go ahead and add some more flour to it. But it's coming out pretty good and it just takes takes a few minutes to mix it by hand. All 
All right, I've been kneading it for about, I guess about eight to 10 minutes here. The consistency is pretty good. It's kind of elasticy. And uh, now I'm just gonna go ahead and coat it with some olive oil, get olive oil all around it. That way it doesn't stick to the bowl when it's rising. And we're just gonna let it, I'm gonna cover it with this towel here and let it rise for about, about 45 minutes to an hour until it's almost doubled in size. And then that's, at that point, we'll take it out, we'll knead it again, and I'm gonna divide it into two pieces, two dough balls. We'll just cover this bowl and we'll check on it a little bit. All right, we let the dough sit for about an hour and it doubled. And I'm gonna go ahead and just knead it a little bit and put it on a floured surface here. And we'll try to estimate here and divide it into half. That's pretty close. And basically just form some dough balls and we'll make it into a little ball here. So just kind of wrap it around. And I've got a container here that I want to put it in, stick it in the fridge, and just let it proof for about three hours this afternoon. Like I said, you can leave it overnight too if you want to do this a day before and just uh, wrap it in. Put it in the fridge overnight. And then we'll just cover this and let it sit in there. Three hours, and then we'll take it out later and we'll make our pizza. Okay, we let the dough proof in the refrigerator for about three hours, and this is what this one did look like. And uh, I rolled this one out, put a flour down, made sure it had plenty of flour so it didn't stick at all, and just rolled it out to about the shape of the pan, pizza pan. And this one, the metal one, I put some cornmeal down so it doesn't stick, and uh, I'm going to treat the uh, other one a little different. It's, it's a stone. So, but this one, what I'll do is, since it is a metal pan, I'll probably uh, preheat it a little bit on the pre-cook the crust a little bit on the grill, and uh, that way it gets uh, crispy enough so it's not soggy. But the uh, the other one with the pizza stone, I'll probably just go ahead and put that right on the pizza stone once the pizza stone's warmed up because it seems to cook the crust pretty quickly on those. Okay, I've got a dough docker here. I think I got it on Amazon basically. Use this over the crust that way, keep it bubbling up when you're preheating. And again, like I said, with the stone, I'll probably just put that right on the pan and put the toppings on the uh, right on the pizza for the stone. But uh, once the uh, pellet grill is heated up to about 450, I'm going to go ahead and put this one in and just pre bake the crust. All right, I've got the pizza on the pizza stone here. I just slid it off the pizza paddle and I'm going to leave it on here just for a couple minutes to. Uh, get the crust crispy just a little bit, and then I'm going to take it and put toppings on. I've already done the same with the other uh, pizza that I had in the metal pan. So we'll just leave this here about a minute or two, and uh, we'll put stuff on the other pizza. Okay, uh, got this pizza off the grill. Like I said, I want to get the crust just a little crispy so that it's not too uh, soggy enough we get the pizza toppings on it. But I took the olive oil, I brushed it on there, and now I'm putting the sauce on the uh, pizza sauce that I made before in the other video. And we're just going to do, put the pizza sauce on first. And then I'll go ahead and put the cheese in the, uh, I think we'll probably just do this one, uh, just cheese only. And the other one I'm going to do pepperoni. All right, got the pizzas ready. I've got the toppings on them. And I'm going to go ahead and put them on the grill here. Okay, brought the pizzas in off the grill. Uh, this one stuck to the pizza stone just a little bit, but uh, it still looks pretty good. And uh, they were on there for about 15 minutes at 450 on the uh, Pit Boss pellet grill. Thanks a lot for watching.